Dr. Moffat, um, Minister, I want to ask you, kind of unrelated subject um, of the review on the effects of the changes in the law regarding the offence of prostitution and specifically the effects of this change on vulnerable women. The number of women that have been charged with the offence of brothel keeping since the change to the legislation and will you please make a statement on the matter? Thank you, Cahirlach, and thank you to the, the Deputy for raising um, again this important question. The principal aim of the changes made by Part 4 of the Criminal Law Sexual Offences Act was to provide additional protection to those involved in prostitution, especially for those who are particularly vulnerable and, as I've just outlined, those who are victims of human trafficking. Among the changes made was to remove those who offer their services as a prostitute from the existing offences of solicitation or soliciting. This allows people working in prostitution to provide information to the Gardaí on, for example, violence towards them by clients, and this also uh, means they can do so without risking prosecution for selling, selling sexual services themselves. The Act also introduced two new offences, and again, I outlined them previously, paying for sexual activity with a prostitute, paying for sexual activity with a trafficked person, and it increases the existing penalty for brothel keeping. In relation to a review of the effects of the 2017 Act, the Act itself provides for a review three years after its commencement. As such, in July, I commissioned the independent expert, Ms. Maura Butler, to undertake the review. Uh, and I know Deputy Connolly asked for a timeline. I don't have a timeline, but I know that she is working on it uh, and will have it concluded as soon as possible. The review will look at whether or not the changes made are in practical uh, practice operating as intended. Are they offered uh, additional protection to those who are most vulnerable? It will assess the impact of Part 4 on the safety, the well-being of persons engaged in sexual activity for payment, and it will consider if further measures are needed to strengthen these protections. In addition, it will quantify the number of arrests and convictions in respect of offences under Part 4. The review is already underway, as I've said, and an online public consultation was open up until mid-September, which is, uh, I think, very welcome in regards to the review. I understand the contributions were received from a broad range of organisations with, of course, very different perspectives. In relation to the second part of the Deputy's question, I am informed by Angartha Siakana that since the commencement of the relevant legislation, provisions on the 27th of March 2017, there have been 60 reported incidents of brothel keeping up until the 15th of October of this year. I understand that of the 37 suspects associated with these incidents, 31 were female, 6 were male. To date, 20 have been charged or summoned in relation to these offences, again, 17 of whom are female and 3 are male. I want to assure the Deputy that the work of my department in this area will continue to be guided by our primary aim of protecting the safety and the well-being of the most vulnerable women here. Thank you, Minister Deputy Smith. Yeah, I'm afraid, as usual, the questions aren't answered. And like Deputy Connolly, I think the, the uh, without giving us a date for the, the completion of the review, it's not satisfactory. If the law states it has to be conducted within three years, then we should have a date for it. Um, I was recently involved in a debate in a student uh, union in UCD um, where it it was said by people who support the opposite position, who don't, uh, who actually pushed for this legislation, and who don't support um, the Sex Workers Alliance of Ireland, who actually kind of organise um, to undermine them in many ways, and they are opposed to this review being completed. So this prompted my question: Why is the? Do we not have a date for the review being completed? Are there uh, outside pressures on you? Are there? Um, sort of groups pushing to say don't do this review because I know that is their wish. I also am alarmed to see that there's 20 people charged with brothel keeping. I put in a PQ um, not a couple of months ago to ask how many purchases of sex were being charged and I got an answer back to say that the, there were several files with the DPP. There's no actual charges against the purchases of sex at that time. Now perhaps you have figures on that because Everybody, what, can you it, I think what this reveals please. is that perhaps this change in legislation isn't working in favour of those for whom it's meant to protect. Thank you, Deputy. Um, in relation to the review, my understanding is that the review was to start three years after the legislation, so that was to start it's, it's initially in March, um, but with the election with the formation of government and with COVID, there was a slight delay. Um, also, the fact that Maura Butler, who was taking on the review, has also undertaken um, a review on familiar side 
Um, there were two pieces of work happening concurrently, but I have spoken to Maura this week. And while I don't have an exact timeline, I will be meeting with her again later on, uh, probably in the next two or three weeks, to, to get into more detail um, and to see if there is any additional support that she herself and her team needs. So while it was l a little bit late starting, and I hope the deputy can understand why, with, with COVID and the formation of the government um, and also the other reviews she's undertaken, she is absolutely committed to this work. Um, and when I do have a timeline, I'll, I'll make that available. Deputy Connolly asked whether this would be made public. Yes, this will be made public. Um, in relation to whether or not anybody has been asking for us not to do it, that's absolutely not the case. And I've not um, had anybody uh, request that this re review not happen or be delayed. Um, in relation to the figures that the deputy asks, if I don't have them offhand, um, but I will try and, and um, get further information for you on that. Um, I mean, the review itself, what we're trying to understand is whether or not it's working, whether or not there are an increase incidence of, of women coming forward where there have been violence against them, where they feel unsafe, but you know, where they have been trafficked, Minister. most importantly, that they know it's safe to do so and to come forward. And I do hope that that's what that review will very much highlight to us. Thank you. Deputy Smith. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware, because you are the Minister for Justice, that uh, being charged with keeping a brothel may mean that you're two women or two people in the same space um, and the personal evidence of many sex workers is that they stay in the same space and tools for their safety because and particularly during covid there's there's um, evidence there that their safety was much more compromised during covid so i'm quite alarmed to hear that there's been 20 charges of brothel keeping and it would be good if we could get a breakdown of what that meant was it two women was it 20 was it five or, or was it uh, indeed somebody pimping them and, and, and in charge of their, their work? Because I think you'll find that by and large it is two people together working together for their own safety or working in the same space for their own safety. So I think there's a lot of questions to be asked and I would just repeat that uh, it's important that we get the information on when the review will be complete, when we can have it. It's important to that cohort of very vulnerable people who are being charged for protecting themselves and keeping themselves safe. And also the other question I asked was, could we get a number of those who've been charged with the purchase of sex? So we can have a look at, uh, so we can have a look at the figures and see what's happening. Uh, Minister McEntee. Thank you, Deputy. Again, I, I'll undertake to get those figures for you. Um, as I've said in the, the initial response to date of the 20 people who have been charged, 17 of those are female and three are male. Um, and I have to admit, I asked the same question. Um, why are so many of those of the 60 incidents, 37 um, then associated with these 31 were female? Um, is there a situation where many of these women um, are doing so under coercion or under pressure and don't necessarily want to be there themselves? Um, and I think if you look at the fact that of the 60, um, there are only 17 who have been charged. The Gardaí will at every instance try to engage with uh, whether it's somebody suspected of keeping a brothel, but to engage with them, to understand their situation, to try and understand whether this is uh, something that they themselves uh, are happy to do or whether it's something that they have been put under pressure. So th there is every, uh, I suppose there, there is at every stage um, an opportunity for the Gardaí to try and engage with these women and to try and ascertain as to whether or not they're there of their own volition or not. Um, in relation to those who work together, and I know this is a question that came up um, uh, when the legislation was being passed, there are concerns that if you decriminalise um, brothel keeping, that it could create a loophole, that it could even furthermore allow uh, abuse by criminal gangs and others Thank who wish to profit from prostitution. But this is something that's been reviewed in the legislation. Um, and as I've said, I, I'm very confident that Maura Butler is carrying out that work and that we will have that review as soon as possible. Thank you. We're moving on to uh, question number 10. Um, Deputy Breed Smith, you have 30 seconds to introduce the question. Yeah, um, it's question speaks for itself, Minister. I'm very concerned about um, what has happened to the demand for a public inquiry into the death of Shane Farrell. Um, this is something that has been brought before the previous doll many times, and I'd like to see what progress has been made on it. Thank you, Deputy. Um, um, at the outset, I would like to offer my condolences to the family of the late Shane O'Farrell. Um, I understand that he was an exceptional young man and his death nine years ago at the age of 23 really was a, ter a terrible uh, tragedy. 
as the deputy will be aware, and I know that the deputy has raised this a number of times, and she raised it um, previously with me in the chamber, a retired judge, Jared Houghton, is currently conducting the scoping exercise into the tragic circumstances surrounding Shane's death. The judge furnished an interim report to my predecessor, Charlie Flanagan, last November, and then following consultation between the judge uh, with Shane's family and the Attorney General, the interim report was published on the 17th of December in 2019. In his interim report, the judge stated that he would not restrict, that he would not limit Shane's family and their submissions to him or the nature and the extent of the documentation that they wished to furnish to him in this scoping exercise. Just to say to the deputy, my department maintains regular contact with the judge. Um, he has assured us that any assistance that is required to complete the final report and um, that he will ask for it and we will of course make it available to him. However, given the COVID-19 restrictions, the judge has recently informed my department that it is likely to be mid-December before he will be in a position to conclude the scoping exercise. I can assure the deputy that this is of course open to the judge to make any recommendations that he sees fit in his final report and this includes the establishment of any form of statutory or non-statutory inquiry so he's not precluded in any way from proposing that. I hope that the deputy will appreciate that it's only appropriate that I would await the recommendations of the final report of the scoping exercise before making any decision in relation to further inquiries into this matter but just to say that I do hope that we will have this before the end of the year. Thank you. Thanks Minister. Deputy Smith. That would be wonderful if we could have it before the end of the year because I just remind the Minister, not that you probably need reminding, but um, for the record, uh, Shane O'Farrell was killed on the 2nd of August 2011. So we're coming into the 10th year of the anniversary of his death and you're aware and all of this house are aware the efforts that his family have gone through to get an inquiry to get justice. There's a huge amount of question marks over what happened with the uh, killer has his own criminal record and the fact that he was at large when he should probably should have been incarcerated he was there were many sentence uh, jail sentences on on his list of other uh, other breaches of legislation both north and south that he was guilty of um, and so for nine years uh, Lucy O'Farrell in particular and the rest of her family have been campaign campaigning extremely hard it was on the 14th of June on, in 2018 that this House passed a motion put by a member of government, Jim O'Callaghan, uh, to demand an open public inquiry into the events leading up to Shane O'Farrell's death and it was on the 13th of February in 2019 that the Shannon did likewise. So the two Houses of the Oireachtas have called for this and we're still waiting. Um, I think, you know, we can't keep hiding behind Covid. There's a lot of work can be done online and we need to progress these things. So if you're given a commitment that something will be brought forward by the judge by the end of the year, then I think we, we should all hold you to that. And by that, I mean the family and the Oireachtas, because the entire Oireachtas, both houses, have voted for this to happen and we're Good still deputy. waiting. Minister. Good deputy. Um, I am informed that it is likely it will be mid-December, so I do hope that we will receive it then, and that is uh, the timeline that I will set and that I will ask the judge to stick to. Um, the most important thing for me here is that the family um, get answers to the questions that they have, um, and the reason that we have set out this scoping exercise first is to see whether or not a public inquiry would bring about those answers for the family. Um, and I understand that there have been many motions here, but I think until we have um, the answers to this um, current uh, scoping exercise, essentially, um, it's hard for me to say whether or not the judge will recommend that. But just to be very clear, as, as minister in this government, we're not objecting um, to an inquiry if that is what is recommended in this report. Um, but I think it's important that we see the report before them. But just to stress, the most important thing here is that this family um, get the answers that they, they, they want, and I hope that we can get them for them, um, but most importantly that they can feel somewhat at peace um, because this has been a very challenging almost 10 years as you've pointed out for them um, and to lose a loved one in those kind of circumstances I can only imagine must be extremely difficult um, so I will do everything that I can to ensure that they uh, do get the answers that they want. Thank Thanks you. Minister uh, Deputy. One last remark is that I sincerely, like everybody else, really care about the family and that they get closure and that they find out what happened to Shane and why. But there's also a matter of public interest here because the wheels of justice turn in many strange ways. And I think when you know a little bit, even a little bit about this case, there are so many questions to be asked. 
So I do think it's a matter of just public interest and not just uh, um, personal interest to the family that we have an inquiry to find out exactly what happened. Because it was Shane O'Farrell nine years ago, it could be anybody else tomorrow. If there is a question mark about how uh, this criminal was dealt with, why he wasn't incarcerated, and what led to the events that killed a young man and took his life and his family's basic existence away from them on that day. Um, so I think when we get the answers, and the sooner we get them, the better, there are, it will probably ask more questions about how this justice system works than it answers. And that's why it's important for everybody in this country to see how, the, as I say, the wheels of justice turn, rather than just it being confined to the O'Farrell family. But of course, they're of the utmost concern here, but there, it, it does open and provoke m many more questions about what happens within the system. Of Thanks, Deputy Minister. Um, again, I suppose it's, it's difficult for me to preempt what may or may not be in this um, report, but I have every confidence um, that Judge Shorten will um, carry out his work, will take all of the information and, and the evidence that is available to him, um, and will bring a, a decision and, and um, include that in the report by the end of the year. Um, but again, I just want to offer my condolences to the family of Shane O'Farrell um, and to say that I will work with them um, irrespective of what comes out of this report um, and we will follow through as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister.